so that's it. That's that's the whole that's the whole story. I don't know. I, I every every sign points to this was the end of this arc, and I'm curious if that's true. Because if that's true, then that was very anticlimactic. <laughs> very anticlimactic. I'm happy to finally get a connection to what the whole thing with Togo is and a final explanation of that. But at the same time, oof. I, I mean, I. I guess it's a good thing because that means they could probably move on to a new story, but I, I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. This There could be more to the story, but it looks like they pretty much wrapped it up. Like, this arc is over. Like, this story of the Sentinels is over, which is a very unfortunate story. It's a very... You can make an argument that this entire arc, if this, again, this, if this is it, is an arc that is telling a story of a lack of success. Like, this is a story that doesn't have some big climactic boom, and that's the point. But, yeah, that, that kind of sucks if that was it. I mean, it, it pretty much begs the question of why was this not just put before the hero chapter? Like, this is just a story, an in-between, that should have been adapted prior, and now they're finally adapting it. Which is cool for anybody that's finally going to get into the series later, because then they can get the whole story and the whole perspective going into Togo being basically erased. But it as a story after the fact is just, why? <laughs> why? But again, I, 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 I'm probably judging too early. We could get into episode five and then boom, we have a new story. But that's rough. But yeah, this is my thoughts on episode four of Yukino as a Hero, the great Monkai chapter. Yeah. Let's jump into it. So yeah, jumping right into the episode, we go straight to them reclaiming the saplings. They do a little ceremony in order to perform this ritual to reclaim the sapling to return back with and yeah of course everything does not go as planned they have tons of vertex attacking them up into the point where they get large vertexes attacking them and it seems like they're gonna lose miroku miroku takes a hit for mibuki and it looks like she pretty much dies but she doesn't die so thank you for the the fake out death that's not cool but sure good on you show for doing that I, it, it's not cool <laughs> the storytellers it's not cool it's really not cool but at any rate mibuki is going to take them on by herself so everybody else can flee but after all this time of her pretty much saving everybody there was no way anybody was going to leave her behind so yeah as she's kind of losing all of her power and she's falling that's when we have suzumi takes a leap of of courage and jumps out there in order to catch her and everybody else starts to fire upon the vertexes. They get in their ship and they basically start doing a, a, a chant before they launch themselves off with their ships and get away from the vertexes. And following this, Mibuki awakens to find Aya is next to her, which is obviously something that she's very pleased to see because she assumed that Aya was gone and was a sacrifice at this point. Because on the other side of the whole story, we get, yes, the finally the conversation with uh, Togo, what the Taisha are doing at Togo's place. And it was to basically fill her in on all this. She basically tells her the entire story of what happened with the Sentinels. They went out and they planned these saplings. And then when they came back, they had to do this whole ritual. And so they were going to need the Mikos. So they sent them off to get the saplings again. <laughs> and yes, they're planning on sacrificing six Mikos in order to appease the gods. And the thing that was a big question mark for me was... Wait, is this the tie-in with the hero chapter? Does it make any sense? Because Togo was, I thought, just holding off the flames, not necessarily a sacrifice to Shinju. That stuff I don't think is very well explained. I know a lot of people in the comics are trying to, you know, clarify a lot of that stuff. It's just I think that the story didn't tell it very well. I think is a thing. Because obviously we do have Yuki in the later hero chapter is put up to marriage to Shinju. That's a completely different ceremony than what they're wanting the six Mikos to do, which is the fire offering. And the fire offering takes six Mikos. Aya was going to be one of them. But as we find out with this episode, the Taisha are at Togo's place to tell her, look, you're enough. You're, you're strong enough that you can be a single sacrifice to replace these six. We're asking you to do it in order to basically save these six. Which I don't know why the Taisha would care to do that. I don't know if that's something that's going to be explained later. Like, why would the Taisha care to go to Togo in order to avoid sacrificing six? It's, here's one with the power of six. Here is six with the power of one. What would be the benefit to losing Togo, who's obviously some sort of special thing, for six common Mikos, unless they feel like the six are more important because of some reason. But obviously Togo agrees to this. She doesn't want to see 
six uh, offerings go out in accordance to just her single life. And so she does offer herself up. And that's, of course, the point where she asks Shinju a favor, and that is to erase her so that nobody feels sorrow for her loss. And this, again, is that fill-in. This is the fill-in for what we kind of missed going into the hero chapter, which we open up the hero chapter with just Togo's gone and everybody's realizing something's missing. And that fill-in is what Togo experienced when she was offered up. She went into this whole offering. Obviously, this fire offering apparently is this where they put them up to be burnt for a long period of time outside the barrier. And that is their way of speaking to the gods. And during this time that Togo's kind of locked away in herself, she ends up meeting Jin again, which is way cool. <laughs> Love seeing Jin again. I, I absolutely miss Jin. I, I, I think she was one of the best characters in the series. And yeah, Jin's telling her like, you know, hey... How's it going? She, Togo's like freaking out because she's seeing Jin again. She's obviously upset because she never, she forgot who Jin was and she still holds true to that. She's still, I mean, we, t we see it in the first episode of this season. Togo's still beating herself up for forgetting Jin. And in this moment, Jin's like, you know, look, it's not your time. It is, it's, this isn't your time. She's like, no, I've done this. It's to help the other six. And she's like, it's not how it works over there. <laughs> this stuff is just a, basically a bandage and it's not going to fix things. And obviously these people are not going to let her have this happen. And yeah, you hear uh, Yuki and everybody else calling out for Togo to come out. And that would be, again, that bridge to the hero chapter. This is what happened when they went there and pulled Togo out of it. Yeah, overall, decent episode. The, the first part of it was kind of shrug, it just a lot of battling and... Uh, a lot of self-sacrificing, a lot of fake-outs, which, I again, I didn't like. I don't like when shows act like a character dies and they don't actually die. I had a nice moment with Suzume actually getting out there and being strong and having her moment to be brave, so that was really cute. But like I said, very anticlimactic. If, if this is it, it's very anticlimactic to kind of just come out of it as a battle. Uh, oh, Aya's alive, by the way, Togo goes... Fast forward, Yuna comes and saves her. Like I said, I'm, I'm very mixed. I, I, I want to say that these four episodes, this story arc is a story that should be told. And I'm happy that it's told. I hate that it's told now versus before the hero chapter. It's anticlimactic, but at the same time, because it's meant to be a failure, which not all stories have to be ending in some sort of success. But it was an interesting viewpoint from the Sentinels and the Taisha's perspective rather than just the hero's perspective. So it's not like it's a failure and that it's a waste of time. At the opposite end of the spectrum, it is, again, very upsetting to me that we get this story now versus before the hero chapter. And if it is, this is the completion of the story and there's nothing else, it feels like a waste of four episodes at this point. So like I said, very mixed on my opinions of it, but either way, it's a solid episode in the end, and it gives us some good perspective into the world of the Taisha and everything like that. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the fourth episode of Yuki Yuna as a hero, the great Monkai chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed my impressions of this episode. If you have a... Again, I, I, I struggle because it's like, I know there's people that have the context of the source material. I don't need to let me know if there's going to be more of it. I would rather wait until the fifth episode to find out if there's more. Just keep the spoilers in check. But again, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, again, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon if you can. We definitely appreciate everybody that does. And y'all take care.